Hi, and welcome to part one of my Secrets of the Sega CD series. It's always bugged me what little is known about the actual hardware that sits behind the Sega CD. And so, in this video and the next, I hope to open your eyes to what the system was actually capable of. I won't go into vast detail regarding the innards of the Mega Drive, but I will touch upon what's actually under the hood. The Mega Drive's main CPU is a Motorola 68000 running at 7.6 MHz. The Mega Drive has a sound CPU, the Zilog Z80, which is for both audio and backwards compatibility with the master system. For FM sound, the Mega Drive has a Yamaha YM2612, along with a Sega PSG, also known as the Texas Instruments SN76489 PSG. The Mega Drive's graphics are powered by a Sega 3155313 VDP, which is also known as the Yamaha YM7101. Finally, the Mega Drive has 136K of RAM, split between working RAM of 64KB, video RAM of 64KB, and sound RAM of 8 kilobytes. It's worth noting here that the Mega Drive was planned to have 128K of video memory, or VRAM for short. This would have resulted in the Mega Drive being able to store twice as much data at twice the speed through increased blast processing or dynamic memory allocation to everyone else. Unfortunately, the planned 128K was scrapped late in development to save money. Everything that was needed for the Mega Drive to use the 128K was left in the system design bar the RAM itself. And even without the RAM present, 128K mode can still be enabled. Demos such as Overdrive 2 take advantage of this mode while working around its limitations to enable faster transfer to video RAM. So we've covered everything you need to know about the Mega Drive. Hopefully you're still with me at this point. I'm now going to quickly cover the Mega CD hardware before we start to discuss how the two work together. As with the Mega Drive CPU, the Sega Mega CD CPU is a Motorola 68000, running at a faster speed of 12.5 MHz. The Mega CD's graphics unit is a Sega 3155548 Custom A6, capable of scaling and rotating graphics. The Mega CD's sound CPU is a Ricoh RF5C164. The Mega CD requires the Mega Drive's VDP to display graphics. This means that the Mega CD is intrinsically tied to the limitations of the Mega Drive. Rumours over the years have suggested that the Mega CD can overcome the Mega Drive's limitations and display 512 colours via a method used by the Commodore Amiga personal computer called Hold and Modify, or HAM. Unfortunately, this is totally inaccurate, as the Mega CD hardware does not support HAM. However, recent developments in the last decade have resulted in the discovery of a hack that enables the Mega CD to display 512-color 9-bit RGB images. This hack has been implemented in two demos by Chili Willy. The first shows a Wolf 3D style engine and the second a slideshow of still images. We won't be covering how the hack works here, but it's a worthy note. The Mega CD was considered to have a lot of RAM for its time, 768 kilobytes, excluding the CD buffer and audio RAM. Some feel the system was never made to do anything substantial with this RAM, but that has a lot to do with the way in which it was configured. Firstly, the program RAM is allocated to the Mega CD's CPU and can only be accessed by the Mega Drive when the Mega CD's CPU is halted. Secondly, the Mega CD's Word RAM operates in one of two modes, known as M1 and M2, both of which have limitations which I shall discuss now. So what happens in 1M mode? In this mode, Word RAM is split in half. The Mega CD can access 128K, and the Mega Drive can access 128K. A flag is then used to flip which system has access to which half of the Word RAM. 1M mode is predominantly used to stream tile data from the Mega CD to the Mega Drive for FMV. It's worth noting that the ASIC cannot be used in this mode. The drive fitted to the Mega CD is a one-speed drive capable of transferring data at 150k a second. With this in mind, it becomes more apparent as to why the memory is set up in this way. Let's create a fictional example of what 1M mode could be used for. 
I'll base it loosely on an existing game, but to remove complexity, we'll ignore any clever codecs and coding tricks. Let's take Night Trap's video. This is shown at a resolution of 168 by 104. We'll pretend Night Trap's audio is 8-bit at 8000 Hz. We'll also say that Night Trap's video is running at 12 frames a second. So let's begin by calculating how much VRAM one frame of video will require. A tile is 8 by 8 pixels, 64 pixels in total, and one tile is 32 bytes. The frame is 168 width by 104 height, 273 tiles. If we take those 273 tiles and times that by 32 bytes, we get approximately 8.7 kilobytes. So now we know that one frame of video is approximately 8.7 kilobytes. Next, we'll calculate how much word RAM 12 frames of video will take. 12 frames at 8.7 kilobytes is 104.4 kilobytes. One second of audio is 8 kilobytes. So let's add our frames and audio together. We have 104.4 kilobytes plus 8 kilobytes, giving us a total of 112.4 kilobytes. So including our audio, we can just about fit everything we need into the 128 kilobytes of allocated word wrap. So let's finally see all this in motion. The Sega CD drive spins up and puts the data into the first 128k bank. Then the bank switch and the Sega CD reads into the second bank while the Mega Drive reads into the first. And for now, that wraps up part one of Secrets of the Sega CD. In part two, I shall discuss M2 mode of the Sega CD, along with some hardware features that are not regularly spoken about, including how the A6 was capable of some basic 3D rendering. A special thanks to Mike Pavan and Joseph Fenton for helping me with the technical fact-checking in this video, and a huge thank you to my patrons who've been supporting me over the last 12 months.